Hello everybody, Michael from Richard J. Sika Pest Control talking with you today about another very prevalent topic in the eyes of home and business owners, particularly if you are, if any at all, concerned with the quality of your walls. And that would be how to prevent termites. What a topic, especially in the lucrative sense that this is a cost of a staggering one billion dollars one billion dollars with a b in damages per year on an annual basis for household destruction causes you want to talk about a bug that knows how to do some damage it is termites and that is the subject and focus of this video how do you prevent these nasty invaders from taking on what was a sanctuary your home where you went to rest, relax, and refresh yourself. Well, the first would be to understand what it is you're messing with, and this is something of high severity in the event that just a few of these insect colonies eating continuously can consume a lot of linear feet in the course of a year. And it's just when you think about in the context of your household support beams a couple of inches here a few more there next thing you know you hear a huge bang in the house and we've got a serious issue that really deals with the structural integrity of your home one that could have been avoided if we just went to the cause and addressed the root of the issue which was to apply precautionary measures before you had to ever put a band-aid on the cut so that you never had that injury happened to your house quote unquote and thus could live a, a life filled with just that much more peace of mind second we thing we have to really get under our belt is understanding the size of these things a termite colony can consist of anywhere from some metrics that even spotted it at 400,000 to well over a million soldiers workers and what are known as swarmers which are termites with wings now the things are airborne phenomenal that's how much of a size we're talking about when we use the word colony and also to give you an idea of the multiple multiplicative implications for this type of subject a single termite queen can if at maximum capacity produce thousands of eggs per day that and those offspring oh I'm sorry and the queen can live between 30 and 50 years that means even if her colony undergoes tremendous destruction she can still get it back she can re-up on her forces something of course you want to fight against and speaking of how to prevent and fight against termites here are a few strategies that you can consider using as well as implement on a daily basis if not recommend to your pest control individual that helps to figure out and fix this issue. The first would be check your wood my dear friends it's partly where they live. Termites and I mean that by saying they vote with their effort and they always love to consume any material that contains cellulose. Well saying that you like to contain cellulose is in the same breath also saying that you love wood because it has an incredible amount of that chemical of which the termites will devour it ferociously and frankly if a tree were to fall anywhere and no one heard about it it's probably very much on the mind of the nearby termites if not already in their stomachs because they've eaten the thing you might want to just also look at your storage. Sometimes where you put these excess building materials, such as firewood, may make a difference. Scrap wood touching the ground is frankly an open door to these bugs to come marching in. And if, you, if your house or property is not exactly large enough for wood to be stored that far away from your house, you can make some roadblocks beneath that area to deny these bugs from direct access. Anything you can think of, whether that be stands or slabs to fight off the issue. You might also want to look at your lumber because using treated lumber 
for any structures that have direct contact with the ground is a very prudent move. Some chemicals used in treating don't guarantee that termites will be repelled. However, they can act as a pretty strong detergent and then you play the odds and you most likely succeed in preventing these things. Look into treated lumber. Now, with that in mind, we've assessed the wood, which is frankly where these things love to go. We had to do that. Now let's talk about the soil. Another interesting point of topic. A lot of these bugs are Mediterranean. In fact, most of them are, and when we're talking in reference to termites, meaning that they create, craft, and live in colonies beneath the ground. They're a big fan of the soil. They make the most elaborate mazes and puzzles that if you brought it onto a macro level, most humans would be shocked at the complexity of these things to begin with. And they're called, the, clin the term in the pest control industry is gallery, which sometimes go three feet, a full three feet below the surface that you unknowingly walk on every single day. That's how intricate these can become. They love to create mud tubes leading from the colony to the above ground area, likely a grass or a grassy region or food source, or even the wood in your home. So again, check your soil. It's a very important part of this, especially because it's a lot of it's basically the bridge that termites go from their home onto the soil to wherever it is they're inclined to go. So you might want to check to make sure if you can't see, if you can't block them off there. And that would be the basis of this strategy. Then, huge point to make here. Assess your water. As with probably any living organism, termites and, and humans alike can't survive without H2O. So you might want to look for some leaks. Where are they? Look for any dropping water, any puddles that seem to be stagnant for a long amount of time. And in that same vein, stagnant water attracts mosquitoes too. So if you just get rid of that, you could kill two birds with one stone, quote unquote. Giving a colony a water source that's close to your home basically just lowers their workload to try to find one source and any vicinity to their colony. You're giving them a water bottle that refreshes them, enabling them to do whatever it is they're aspiring to. Not the best move if you're trying to keep the wall integrity of your home. And then you might even want to remove any heavy growths or bushes, I'm sorry, brushes from your home. Such dense, really, like hyper-dense vegetation can create areas of hyper-moisture, which of course funnels all the way back to water. You want to make sure that they are not attracted to it, that they got to work a little bit for it. And thus you might want to avoid and take out some of that vegetation, even if especially if it's not contributing to you in any way. Now those are some of the very popular ways that you can DIY, get rid of these animals, but some others include the ability to look for access points. This is very important because there's not exactly the A number one perfect termite repellent or chemical, chemical to ward off every single one of these bugs, the best form of prevention is just to make it difficult on them. So if you look any and see any cracks or holes in your home, especially if they're interrelated with water sources, that's easy access for any of these termites to get in. Plug those up, some simple spackle if you want to go low end, or if you just need some extra and frankly sophisticated approach to this, you can consult a well-respected pest control expert and they'll be glad to inform you how to reduce the access points of, of these bugs in your home. Another idea would be liquid termiticide. It's generally applied around the foundation of a house as well as underneath, on occasion underneath. For new construction sites it can be a, it's applied to the graded soil 
as the home is being constructed. However, if the building is already existing and the, the foundation is partially out and drilled to ensure proper, proper coverage. There are some of these liquids on the market that act as barriers and repellents to termite invasions and the others are a little more drastically and some would say cynically as nerve poisons killing the bugs as soon as they touch the thing. Again, another option if you're looking to go all out DIY. In-home baits, why not discuss those? These can be installed inside a home if termite damage is just obvious. And a new series of these baits have been developed by an organization known as Dow AgroSciences. And these help the, the, to fight the more aggressive, what is the, known as Formosan termite, which can penetrate even the strongest of structures, cement, brick, plastics, water lines, just to name a few. These in-home baits can really help to attract those and then ultimately eliminate them. And subterranean bait, yes, the various varieties. Rather than acting as a roadblock to termite invasion, these things just go straight to the heart of the matter and try to destroy them. Whereas they're set about every 10 feet or so into the ground around the perimeter of your house. And they are designed so that the toxins in the bait affect the termites by preventing the molting process causing the bugs to just pass away in their shells. Now this is more of a long-acting toxin, just as an FYI, that allows the animals to both ingest the poison, but be the carriers and the infectants that bring it back to share with their colony and thus destroy it from the inside out. Now, subterranean bait, in-home bait, liquid excuse me, liquid termiticide and trying to scout out those access points are great options for you to prevent any termite damage done to your home. However, if there is damage already and you've tried your fair share of approaches to negate this from happening in the future but just aren't seeing the results, feel free to contact us at 914-667-5610. Richard J. Sika Pest Control will be glad to eradicate any bug problem you have, and certainly if it's termites, we'll be able to aid you there, getting rid of these bugs in as little as a few treatments. And thank you for taking the time to watch this. We look forward to hearing about how you apply all these different strategies to get your home and your life back. And until we see you again next time, we look forward to hearing how you have debugged your home. And again, if you need any help at all, feel free to call us. We'll be happy to have a free consultation with you to get your life and home.